But anyway, we got two Windows 3.1 games. I thought we'll do something with fairly good quality and one that's like the absolute bottom of the barrel. I've yet to sort of scrape the absolute bottom of the barrel. So we've got Is Norgi Escape from Dimension Q? Um, shouldn't be too bad. It's by the guys who did Gigabone Gang, uh, Headbone Interactive. And then we've got Ninja Danny and Sherlock Shelty, something, something, 11 Downing Street, the shit one. Um, I'll talk more about that when we get to it. Let's do Escape from Dimension Q, shall we? No, you don't want to let me have keyboard controls. That's, that sucks. What the fuck is going on tonight? Seriously. All right, that is has never happened to me in my entire life while playing Windows 3.1. I can fucking... No, I can't... Even... What? You're not going to let me draw shit in Paintbrush? What the... Maybe it's just Windows 3.1. Maybe I've killed it. Maybe I've legit killed it. Wow. Okay. Maybe this it's the Ninja Nanny curse, perhaps. Because this game does have, like, a cursed kind of feel to it. So other people have played this before. Um, Vinny tried it. Clint from Elgia has tried it. I think Panutes did it as well. Um, but yeah, I think I've been saving this for a while because it's like, it seems like super retro. It's it's kind of like a baptism of fire if you do retro games. So um, yeah, let's let's jump in. Let's jump into the strange world. Yep, Ninja Nanaka text. Brother. And audio's good for once. Audio's working at least, that's a good start. Turning knowledge into adventure. Oh, good. Oh, they do the gong at the end, okay. It's hard to tell with Windows 3.1 quality. Right. So listen to that fucking cacophony. The continuing adventures of Ninja Nanny and her faithful companion Sherlock Chelsea. So where's Ninja Nanny a cow? Seriously. Warm bowls of minestrone soup filled her dream. Yet a moment's nap had scarcely elapsed when Brake squealed and loud angry honking ended sleep. So yeah, there's like these little hot, hot key animation things. Norbertina is incorrectly romping along California's picturesque Highway 1. Click here, she'll appear in this spot, spot in a very few moments, then you'll have a decision to make. Okay. Yeah, so this is cartoon quality animation, apparently. You can see they couldn't even get rid of, like, all the transparency around her either. Um, go straight down the middle. Nothing will happen to you. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. You have just committed your entire life savings to reconstructive surgery. Putting our heroin back into a cow from the hood ornament of that truck. Would you like to reconsider your decision? Fuck, you guys know all about heroin, don't you? So, yeah. <laughs> I love how, like, the writing is pretentious, but it's also, like, fairly grammatically incorrect, and there's, like, shit punctuation. Because I mentioned that too, I've seen comments on like the um, the Bodyland video we've done, and like I think I gave the animation shade a bit of shade in that one, and like two commenters came out. No, one commenter came out saying, uh, "I yeah, I got my start on this straight after college. I did the animation on this, and yeah, I kind of feel bad. Not for this game. No, no, no way. A half seen shagged." Behind his salt crusted galoshes, following in damp footsteps. Shagged behind? Okay. <laughs> anyway. How Norbertina wished that a pincer would crutch the mariner's lumpy nose as punishment for destroying her sign. I'm the shadow nips. This is probably the highlight, but I don't want to spend too much time on this. Like, out of all the people who've done this, like LGR did a short one, Vinny and Panutes only did this for an hour. We're going to stick with this. We're gonna, I'm going to read the whole thing on stream. And you're going to like it. <laughs> fresh oats. Fresh, fresh oats. Fresh oats. What? 
I can't stop this. It just keeps going like this. What? A good edu education, intelligence, and patience are required. The finest nanny schools are in England. England? Um, the map in Ernestina's history textbook showed an island separated by a skinny channel from a wide, fat land of Europe. Travelling there meant riding on a ship day after monotonous day, slugging across the cold oceans to dock near the tall, jagged cliffs of Dover. She had quickly dropped the idea of becoming a nanny. It sounded like an awful lot of work and England was very far away. There must be some other way to fit in, but how? Mildred and Albert clearly hated her, only Ernestina cared, yet for the third time this month she had skipped their lessons and driven off to a doctor's appointment. Whenever Mrs. Wonby went away, she spent the night with her sister Edgarina, a San Francisco architect specialising in married skyscrapers. So the half scene had been left alone again for another empty day on the wicker swing. Like, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around this. Oh, legit, legitimately. Um, so she's a cow, but she lives on a farm being taken care of by someone and she wants to be an English nanny? Like, what the fuck? She perched on a wet, slippery running board, winding her leg around the cold metal pole and holding on tight. Even this wobbly journey was better than more hoof blisters. Damp breezes shivered her skin until skyscrapers blocked the wind, then hot sun roasted her ears. So, and it's... So it can jump up and grab onto a tram with a fucking arm as well. Alright, alright. I'll just keep suspending my disbelief. Okay. Tears blurred her eyes so that the bold letters Ice Cream Emporium were only a neon jumble flashing above a high iron fence with gilt tip spears. The elaborate wrought iron suggested a prosperous family of Italian coffee merchants, but the old-fashioned gingerbread-style houses' walls had been painted beatnik psychedelic banana yellow, holding up mint green shutters and a lavender front door. I've read Naked Lunch and it makes more fucking sense than this, seriously. Ben folded arms across his chest and the fluffy white hat drooped almost uh, to his lips. Hmm, I guess you're right. Look here, cow, we'll start you at minimum wage, $3.50 an hour. Cow wrinkled her forehead, calculating how long it would take to earn $5,000 at three fifty an hour. Only minimum? Yeah, Ben answered firmly, but it's all you can eat. Oh, God, here we go. Norbertina anxiously plopped three scoops into a steel cup, then poured in a whisper of milk. His order clamped between front hooves while she held it under a whirly mixer. On hind legs, the car felt metal than staring watching the exposed half steam birthmark. In a panic, she cursed the slow machine, then frantically wiggled the apron around and dropped his milkshake. No, no, stupid cow, get the mop afterwards. Ben Hogg blocked her from dashing towards the kitchen. Make that boy a new one right away. No, that's okay, I changed my mind, gotta go. Melvin smoked at the calf and ran out in a big hurry. So what's the point of chasing off the cow? Is she valuable or something? I don't know. Oh my god, okay. So that's the point of the fucking... So that's the birthmark, apparently. On Norbertina, just a coffee cup. Come on, you lazy cow. Woo! What? And what... Is this meant to be censoring the udder, or is the udder just Come red? On, you lazy No fucking idea. Anyway. But look at the quality of this. Like, <laughs> so probably done in, what, MS Paint. I know some things give you, like, the pattern fill thing, but I can hell. Like, and pe they expected people to pay money for this. They really did. Despicable. I'm a perfectly respectable businessman. Yes. Later. I'm sure you, I'm sure you are. What the fuck was that noise? What the fuck was that noise? <sighs> okay, and here's oh yeah, Sydney's not looking that much better, is he? Okay, eleven hundred and seven. Was he serious? That meant she'd already earned enough to mail herself to England with money left over for nanny school and a place to stay, a place where no one would lock her in at night. 
The calf leaned forward for a closer look, nose almost jamming the entire male slot. Yes, yes, it was true. Very suddenly, with a warm feeling of hope spreading throughout her entire body, Norbertina lifted her head and almost gave the old rough sheep a kiss. Oh no, we've gotten into fan fiction territory. <laughs> a Sonic fan's written this. They're going to use every damn word in the thesaurus, aren't they? Yeah, they've given it a red hot go. Oh, uh, uh, uh. fuck on what? <laughs> well, that's four mooses in post mooses in astonishment, I guess. My God, ah. Uh. Going to lunch with a priority male? Oh my god. Um, don't, won't, don't, won't. Isn't there anything in here we do? Oh, oh, that's apparently a moose standing on a stool. Oh, he's, <laughs> this is you, apparently. <laughs> apparently he's quite angry. And what's this one doing? Oh, what? Stamp pads in stock. Three postmasters scowled at the recommendation, but their female co-worker was so busy applying the thick coating of mascara to her eyelashes that she hardly even noticed. Do we even go on from here? All right. Uh, all right, 50 yellow draw. It was drying in the sun and looked much smaller than the green parcel that bald man had mailed less than five minutes ago. I could fit inside, she reasoned quickly. If any post moosters opened the barrel, it'd just I'd just hold real still so they think I'd be been stuffed by the taxidermist. But how will I get the stamps off? Oh yes, Raymond said, steam them off. So this is the plan now. Just hide in a barrel, put a stamp on it. If anyone asks, she's been stuffed and mounted. Right. Okay. And she's got, this is apparently, she's going to be in this thing for weeks in steerage on the way to England. So uh, I could have, could swear I've seen this thing before. Oh, sorry. Um, mm. Hang on. Bulging mail sack. <laughs> Just for you, buddy. Just for you. So she got this set up and now it's getting uh, cancelled. <laughs> England on five pounds a day. Shut up already. I'll make you an even better deal. <laughs> Just uh, $5,000 and you get to keep your lives. The Baron couldn't wait to wipe the smirk off their faces. He lifted one pork already, <laughs> chat. <laughs> I've got you now. <laughs> but Ben and Gary were so heavy that stranger the stranger felt his biceps pop out, almost tearing his billiard green coat. The hogs pedaled their short, wide legs midair and let out fearful pip squeaks while each tried to wriggle out of a leather leather gloved fist. <laughs> Ben Hogg's ascot rippled as the Adam's apple seemed to bob in his... Oh my god, this is so... <laughs> oh boy. Oh, we're finally on to chapter four. Okay. Ah, finally. Man, I didn't know why you spent all that time reading about a cow when you could have hurried up to chapter four and met Sherlock Shelty, computer criminologist. Okay. <laughs> Good to see Plan 10 from Outer Space is going well. Oh, it's going fantastically. Look at that shit. Yeah, yeah pull the guy out that's about to catch on fire. That's a good idea. Well, that was 50 bucks well spent. Um, what's going on here? I'm hoping this is a leg. True. Oh, <laughs> look at this fella. Oh dear. Is this. Uh, well, he stole my fucking hat for a start. <laughs> and I don't get. They've just used power tools for all the sounds in this for some reason. So this is basically, you know, me with sideburns. And when I was. Yeah, back when I was still smoking. Um. Alright. 
In the rearview mirror, the man noticed that his driver was spying on him and became instantly annoyed. This rude dog was so short that he had to sit on a stack of London yellow pages just to see over the dashboard. Why his plaid, plaid Tam a Shatner barely peeped through the steering wheel? What? Don't worry, Thew will be there in the barrel. The orange-haired giant paused suspiciously and rubbed his bushy sideburns. Why did you put her in a barrel? That wasn't in our plan. There must have been trouble. No trouble, Baron. I got away clean. No trouble, Baron. I got away clean. And, yeah. Oh, oh, get an actual animation. Okay. From San Francisco at this very wharf. <laughs> yeah, real art. Are planning a warm reception. With this old cart to continue. Any moment. Okay. We did it. Actual art, but yeah, no actual animation, unfortunately. Oh no, the bobbies. Yeah, <laughs> actual fucking engraving. Beware of the crane. Why have a crane in the middle of the fucking thing? Uh, did he make it? Did Noel escape the Sergeant Bobby? Yeah, why not? After his harrowing chase by London's finest, Noel has finally arrived at his favourite pub in time to send a certain barrel off to poor Richard's pawn shop before meeting with the bear. Noel Cairo seems to have found something else on the wharf during its forced excursion through the warehouses. Is Norbertina still inside? Oh no, the Baron's got her. Read on to find out. Okay. Would you like to walk, look, walk towards Glump Cottage and click here? Oh, fuck. Would you like to go inside? Then click. When Horatio and Evelyn Glump were notified that they were to appear in this story, they requested a formal portrait. They don't normally dress this way. Okay. Oh, we got more fucking chatbots, hey? Yeah, let's fucking sort you out, hey? Man, uh, am I ages? Oh, here we go. Really tiresome to read all these words and now the rhythm. Basically the worst way to learn to read because it's a fucking slog. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, it's like... I don't, I don't know who this is for either. Like, it shouldn't be for kids, but it somehow is. But yeah, I don't know. I just... Be interesting. Yeah, like, I don't think it'd even be interesting to look for the history behind this, but anyway... From the celluloid or silicon end of the state, you know, film or chips? Come, come, dear, speak up, you're ridiculously shy. The new roommate's nose seemed to twitch with its own, twitch its own apology. I haven't eaten in three weeks. Three weeks? What sort of a cruise liner did you come over on? A mail ship. What, no women for company? Not exactly. You're so bloody evasive. The Sheltie felt his temper rising, so his collar seemed instantly tight. Honestly, getting a fact out of you is harder than pulling a three-day-old taffy. Now her weight shifted to an elbow so that his attraction was immediately drawn to a bizarre half steen birthmark on a dull black and white hide. Didn't anyone teach you manners? Why, it's not natural for a cow to act so aloof. What's your name, lass? It came out in a barely audible murder, Norbertina. Not bad, suppose it'll do, and I am cause of Sherlock Shelty. Oh, they put in like three fucking hours for it. Sherlock! Fuck's sake. He drum rolled that uh, it's royally announcing himself bent over her hoof like a proper gentle hand. Computer criminologist well known throughout the United Kingdom. Oh my fucking god. Oh. So this is Sherlock Chelsea. Alright, we're on the last fucking chapter. Oh, already and start my chapter. This is really how we're doing it. Really? It started well enough, but now it's just fucking, yeah, it's getting to me. Oxbridge Nanny School. Right. Right. 
Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves, boomed along the second floor hallway of Evelyn Glump's Cotswold Manor, followed by noises of water splashing everywhere. Tiptoeing up to the bathroom door, Norbertina spied through its keyhole and saw a hippopotamus playing with an armada of toy boats. Uh, here's a hippopotamus. Uh. Do you suppose this hippopotamus can dance? Uh, I suppose. Thank you for your confidence. <laughs> do it, it's just doing the Charleston fucking hell. Oh dear. Anyway, is rub. Oh my god! What these? These faces. Fucking seriously. How? Oh yeah, yeah. We got all the time Are in the world. Sure you want to yes, I have no mercy. And how would this be exciting for a kid as well? Like, you play Gus and the Cyberbots, you play all the other stuff. Fucking, you click on a hundred million more interesting things than a cow ironing pants. Right next to Faversham's pie shop where the lorry drivers stop for grub, it's got a tall chimney, one of those half stone, half timber places with, with a thatched roof. Quite old fashioned, no electricity, just like my clan and the Shetlands. They light their rooms with a collie. Don't worry, Lass, I know a sweet natured female there, uh, an administrator, Miss Agnes Thigmorton. Oh, shut up. <laughs> yeah, not reading the footnotes, as I said. Uh, how much more is this? Is there, there's got to be fucking. This is meant to be the last chapter of the story, for God's sake. From the very bottom of an aged staircase, Nobertina's eyes ascended 15 worn-out steps to the tennis ball head of a 300-pound, 8-foot ostrich. If I were you, I'd stay away from that nasty old ostrich, Agnes Thick, thick Mutton. Uh, oh heck, just stay away. Hmm, well, you young whippersnapper, go and head it and find out for yourself. For me, I'm getting out of here before you click on her anyway. Okay. Old lady just leaves. Do we get a picture of the um the ostrich? Oh my god! Ugh. That's an ostrich. Bark. Bark. <laughs> There's no fucking sound on this or anything. Do you think poor Norbertina should go to school here? Why not? Might as fucking well. You probably will anyway. Um, can I leave? You must the 4 p.m. A parent come here this instant. Um, okay. Listen, to what's behind the green door? Cow? Cow? What's the sound going? Did someone mention a cow? Oh my god. Anyway. Nathan, don't panic. I was about to dismiss this penniless, uneducated cow. Cow, did someone mention a cow? The ox post spoke in a mild, girlish voice. Tut tut, not so hasty, Miss Stig Morton. You know our scholarship program for certain American cows still has an empty slot? What? The bird squawked. I've never heard of her. One of Nathan's short, heavy bone legs shot out from under his black headmaster's gown and kicked the ostrich's rump to shut her up. Then he stood on hoof tips to whisper in her ear. Oh, that program, Agnes nodded. Well, my dear, the ox purred each syllable, his dull brown eyes sparkling with keen enthusiasm. Where are you from? Rancho Bolinas, Northern California. And your name? Nathan leaned so close that the near-sighted half-steen could see his nostrils twitching in little spasms. Norbertina one beer. Oh my, my, this is my, I mean, your lucky day. The ox rubbed his front hooves together in obvious delight. Uh, there happens to be a vacancy for one Northern California cow whose last name begins with a letter in the second half of the alphabet. Peck out that contract, Miss Thig Morton, and strike out amount due. Make it zero payments. Now, Norbertina, you just sign right here and start first thing tomorrow morning. Yes, my dear, the ostrich bowed, stretching out a wrong, long, bristly neck until a quill pen dropped from her beak. Take this as a little present to start your studies. Oh, and there's no reason to be formal. You may call me Agnes. 
In the days, the half scene quickly signed her name and pranced down the rickety old staircase, humming the mint note. That's bizarre. The half scene was unconvinced. I could have sworn I met you when I was working at Hog and Doss somehow. No, I don't think so. Oh, I've just worked that out. It's meant to be like a Hog and Doss spoof. Hog and Doss. Righto, righto. Then how did you know she started... Oh, yeah, hang on. Um, I hate ice cream. Then how did you know she started to ask and shut her mouth in a panic and took another step closer to Miss Rhodes' door? Nathan put his arm around her shoulder. My sweet girl, it's your cowardly duty to go and take care of these poor lonesome calves. But but I haven't seen any photos, the half-seen narrowed her eyes in suspicion. The orange-haired man crushed his cigar under one boot heel, then clamped down on two fingers and whistled a shrill note. From out of nowhere, heavy footsteps clattered across the dusty floor. A couple of muscle-band tattoos grabbed Nor... A couple of no muscle-band tattoos grabbed Norbertina, lifting her up in the air. She kicked her legs against her soft bellies and let out a scream that was instantly muffled by the stranger's leather-gloved palm. Her eyes travelled down the staircase, looking through windows above the front entry at a black hearse with darkly tinted windows. Its back door panel stood wide open, and a liveried chauffeur was pacing back and forth as though ready for a quick getaway. Painted in flowery white script across the hearse's black side was morbid mortuaries. Cold bumps of fear bristled over the half-seen skin as she thrashed about to wriggle free, but the two thugs had a hammerlock on her knees. Without any warning, the chauffeur stiffened, drawing his body to its full height and sticking out his chest so that the morning sun glimmered upon a row of silver buttons. One instant later, Oxbridge's chimes sounded bring, 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 like the tinny echoing of Horatio Glump's bicycle bell. The mahogany front door creaked open very slowly and a nightstick poked through its entry, followed by a barrel chested English bulldog in navy blue porcelain policeman's attire. Pictured barrel chested English bulldog. Oh, there's not even sound anymore. That's slack. Um. Oh, this is the one cop they brought. Okay. Yeah, this isn't going to end well. Let me... Ah, fucking hell. <laughs> you want to know me first impression of this overgrown pair of striped pants? <coughs> uh, yes, uh, Mr. Bobby. Is this meant to be doing anything? This is apparently Bulldog Bobby. No, okay. So there's not even, like, voices or fucking anything like that anymore. And shit... Oh, that... Did we just crash the game? Roderick nodded a suspicious farewell, then strapped on his helmet, muttering, Good day, then. Wait, wait, let me show you out, Mr. Roderick. Norbertina snatched the honorary diploma from an astonished Nathan and bounded down threadbare steps, shadowing the Bobby's heels. I've always wanted to know how to drive a perambulator in traffic. You want to... Oh, no. No! Silicon Alley, management is committed to getting the next episode to you as soon as possible. And they're not sure. It's fucking cliffhanger. Artists. They ended this on a fucking cliffhanger. They could have, like, fucking. Like, five episodes. It's taken me, what? Nearly two hours. No, over two hours to read all that. And they ended on a fucking cliffhanger. What? What is it, like. What is this garbage? They genuinely want, they they were so fucking up their own asses that they said to themselves, "Yeah, we can put this into a continuing story." Fucking what? That was not culture. That was not fucking culture. That was like, ah, oh. it's like yeah. It, it, imagine a book, but every page is like a hand, a clenched hand. And every time you get to that new page, it opens the hand up and it's just a fart. That's literally how I felt reading this this book. And it, did I mention? No mention of ninjas. It's called fucking Ninja Nanny. Zero. Zero mentions of fucking ninjas in this book. There's even like, yeah, there is a, ter I'll put it in the fucking thumbnail. There is a terrifying picture of said cow. Just as a fucking ninja. 
No, I, all right. No, I can't deal with it anymore. 